In this occasion, I'm gonna go over the main terms and equations for all the main elements on a horizontal curve. The following diagram shows all the main elements on a horizontal curve. I'm gonna go and explain each one of those. The actual horizontal curve is the bold yellow curve that you see in this diagram. In order to explain all the main elements in the horizontal curve, I'm going to start at the left side of the curve and then work myself to the right side. The first point on the curve starting from the left side, uh, you can see it's uh, labeled PC. That is for point of curve and also can also uh, be labeled as BC. That would be for beginning of curve. The second point uh, that goes along with this one is basically the end of the curve which is also labeled BC that is if you follow the whole bold yellow curve all the way to the end that's where you're gonna end up with EC and it also can be called uh, PT or uh, point of tangency L is the actual length of the curve that is uh, the actual distance along the bold yellow curve now I want to bring your attention back to the very first point on the curve. Um, before the rotor actually reaches this, uh, this point or the beginning of the curve, it's actually a uh, or usually it's a straight line. Now if we were to extend this uh, straight line beyond the beginning of the curve, then we will uh, actually will have what it's called their back tangent. Now if uh, I take your attention to the last point on the curve or EC, uh, we can apply the same thing that I just mentioned for the first point. That is that if we were to do something similar at the end of the curve and extend the straight line coming from the road beyond the point EC, then we will have created the forward tangent. Now, if we were to extend both tangents far enough, eventually both lines would uh, come to an intersection. And this point is simply called the point of intersection or PI. This point of intersection, it's a quite important point as you will find out once you start solving more problems that they're gonna reference back at least to the name of this angle and the name of this angle is called deflection angle and this deflection angle it's formed if you depart or start at the back tangent and turn clockwise until you hit the forward tangent if we draw a line from the beginning of the curve to the center of the circle forming the arc for our curve and then we do the same from the end of the curve to the center of the circle forming the arc for a curve. Then the angle between both lines intersecting at the center of the circle will be called the deflection angle. It, it would be the same one that I just explained uh, previously if you were to start at the back tangent and then turning clockwise until you hit the forward tangent. These two angles are the same. So sometimes if they ask you for either one and then in the same problem statement they just give you the other one then it would be an easy uh, way of getting or knowing getting to the answer. Now I'm gonna back up just a little bit. Uh, the lines that uh, I mentioned that are drawn from the beginning of the curve or the end of the curve all the way to the center of the circle these lines are called the radius of curves and uh, just to make sure that 
you know you you know that the term can sometimes they would just use it like that they would not show a diagram they just uh, stated in the problem statement and just call it radius curve and that way you know what, what they're meaning the next element they're gonna talk about it's called the long chord and this is the straight distance between the beginning of the curve to the end of the curve and just be mindful that sometimes they yet they try to use this one to uh, get to make you get the wrong answer uh, they would kind of try to confuse you uh, trying to make you think that this is actually the length of the curve but uh, just be mindful that this is, this is actually a straight line from beginning of the curve to the end of the curve and it's not the actual length of the curve. The angle between the long chord and the back tangent or the long chord and the forward tangent that's half of the deflection angle and this is helpful sometimes they will ask you for the deflection angle and they will actually give you this angle so you just multiply times two and then that's your answer. The distance between the center of the long chord and the center line of the length curve it's called the mid ordinate. The distance from PI to center of length of the curve it's called the external distance. Degree of curve it's the angle formed between the radius lines for a curved segment of 100 feet. That's it for the most or, or main elements on the horizontal curve. Now I'm gonna go over the most uh, used equations for the FB exam and the California specific exam. The first one is the equation used to determine the radius. One thing to pay close attention on this uh, equation is that the constant 5,729.578 has units of feet over degrees. Having said that, now you know that the degree of the curve needs to be entered in degrees and not in radians, and that way our result will be in feet. There are three different equations to determine the length of the curve. I'm gonna go over each one. The first one is the most used, uh, I would say, or the easiest one to use it's just the deflection angle needs to be in degrees that's the only thing that uh, I can note on this one the resolve units will depend solely on the units for the radius which is degrees the second equation requires the deflection angle to be entered in radians that's the only difference uh, between the this one and the, the first equation if you are given the deflection angle and the degree of curve, then it is quite easy to determine the length of the curve. Just plug in the different values and then you have uh, your result. And now to determine the tangents, all you need are the radius and the deflection angles in degrees. That's uh, pretty much it. Just plug in and then you get your result. To determine long chord, you can do it by using the radius and the deflection in degrees. Or if that radius is not known, instead they give you the tangent, then just use the second equation. There are three different equations to determine that mid ordinate. I'm gonna go uh, through each one so you can have a better idea how to use it. Uh, really, the best one will boil down to the one that adjusts better to the given information and the problem that you're working on. Same thing can be said of the three different equations to determine the external distance. There's actually another important element that I haven't mentioned before. This element is called horizontal sightline offset or HSO. A sightline obstruction is basically any roadside object within the horizontal sightline offset distance above the roadway surface at the center line of the lane on the inside of the curve and take this picture it will probably illustrate better of what I'm trying to say. Uh, when, just one note uh, quite important is that the HSO should not be confused with the mid ordinate. 
uh, at some times they can become the same thing, but they're not necessarily the same thing. I'm gonna go over HSO on a different video just because I don't want to make this one way too long. In that video I'm gonna work out some problems to better illustrate the whole element of HSO. It's quite important, it does come out at least once in the exam, if not twice. Thank you for watching. I would like to ask for your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.